The Nigerian Military Defense Headquarters and the United Nations differ on the number of farmers murdered in Zabamari in Borodu State. And mass defection might be awaiting the PDP as it refuses to announce the zone that will take the ticket of the presidential election in 2023. And this is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladengue. Welcome back and to the first issue of the day. About 43 farmers have been killed by Boko Haram terrorists in Zabamari village in Meduguri, capital of Baronu State, Nigeria. According to reports, the attackers tied up the agricultural laborers working in rice fields and, you know, killed them in a gruesome manner. However, a controversy concerning the numbers of farmers killed has arisen. While the defense headquarters says 43 farmers were murdered, the United Nations reported that over 110 locals were killed, adding that many other innocent civilians were wounded in the ruthless attack. Joining us to discuss this, whether 110 or 43, we want to look at the issue in a holistic manner. And we have joining us uh, Kabir Adamu. Good evening, a security expert. Good evening. Yes, uh, good to have you again. The pleasure is mine. Yeah, and it's sad that uh, we have to discuss security once again. But let's look at um, what could have actually necessitated such huge discrepancy. We are not uh, averse to s different figures coming up when there are issues like this. But what could actually bring up such huge controversy before we look at uh, the Duster the Act that was committed by the insurgents? Um, well, we need to understand that the territory is security challenged where this uh, happened. And so um, recovering corpses uh, would be a bit difficult. I am aware that as of yesterday, there was a small um, protest, as it were, by the residents of the town where this could should be. They wanted to go into the farm to recover the corpses, but the security forces, the military in particular, prevented them, saying that the location is not yet secured. In fact, it took the intervention of some of the state government officials before the military allowed that. And I'm aware that today, um, additional corpses were recovered. So as that today, the corpses uh, confirmed that is near 70. As at this afternoon, it was 69. And I'm, from the information I got this evening, one additional body was recovered. So it's likely that the confirmed um, cop dead would be 70. Now, whether that would be the total or not, it would depend again on if additional personnel go into the security challenged area to now uh, find uh, more corpses or, or not. Then let's also remember that uh, available information indicates that 10 women are missing. Now, those women may have been abducted and they may be recovered or not, or we may see their, their, their corpses. Uh, what I find a bit shocking is the speed with which the UN came out with its uh, you know, report. Uh, normally, in such circumstances, the UN would want to rely out with the Nigerian government. The local authorities. Uh, especially local authorities, especially where the circumstances are a bit unclear. You know, when if 100 persons or 110 persons are missing, it is not exactly correct to say the 110 are dead. You know, it would probably be more sensible to say uh, this number of corpses have been okay. recovered. However, this number is yet to be recovered. And okay. so we do not know if they are alive. Okay, thank but you. But to conclusively say 110 
would mean you have recovered 110 Ken corpses. But I can tell you in all confidence that as at this evening, the corpses that were recovered were 69, with the possibility that one additional one okay. was recovered, making it 70. Okay. Thank you, Kabir. Uh, we understand that we're now being joined by Dr. Ona Ehomu, another security expert. Good evening, Mr. Ehomu. Yeah, do we have Dr. Ona in the, in the, uh, joining us now? Good evening, sir. Wow, I think we have quite a friendly network tonight. Okay, Dr. Ona, if, well, we will bring you into the... Can I... Okay, we'll come back to you. Uh, Mr. Kabiru, my worry a bit is um, why we may not be... Why we may not downplay the fact that lives were, were killed, I mean, lives were taken, irrespective of the number. But we're looking at, um, you know, just an immediate issue where we were having back and forth between the CNN and what has been reported in Lekki. And that brings us to how such stories should be authenticated before it is released. You know, I know you're not a journalist, but I'm talking of how we should, you know, look at this process so that we don't always have these conflicting figures. And trust me, a whole lot of people will want to believe the higher figure than the normal figure. Then don't also rule out the fact that sometimes some of these security agents sometimes are accused of playing down the figure. So how authentic should this issue be reported? Well, uh, we were in the era of infodemic, and within that infodemic is the element of fake news. So the best way to counter that fake news is for um, the, the genuine and verified news to dominate the space. Uh, so constantly, I expect the um, verified sources to constantly release information and not only that, uh, to seek to engage the various elements to show transparency and to also show willingness to share this information. Part of the challenge I've had from several sources is the, whenever they try to reach out to some of these uh, you know, agencies, including the military, uh, sometimes they hit a stumbling block. Now, uh, when such things happen, we should go into the crisis management mode where it has already happened. You know, 43 or up to 100 persons missing and already copies have been discovered. So you can't hide that, not in 2020. So what you should do is to use that information, build trust, mm -hmm. and you know, as, as much as possible counter the fake news that would mm -hmm. arise. So in this instance, um, the governor of Bono State has spoken I'm aware that the chairman of the local government, um, Jerry, has spoken. I'm also aware that the presidency, including a visit today by the Senate president, representing the president himself. So all of these things need to be put out there so that Nigerians can see that these are people on ground. This, they, they, they have no reason, really. The governor has no reason to lie. The chairman of the local government has no reason to lie. The military has spoken, too. So a uh, one voice saying the same thing, representing the government, I think will counter whatever fake news that is out there. Okay, okay. I think uh, we can move away from the controversy around the FIGO and see how we could actually avert this kind of crisis. Another issue that also played up is the issue of, um, you know, the, 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 the farmers probably um, did not get enough security protection before they embark on that. And I think it's a lesson for us to learn. And uh, I also want to put it on record that some sections of the media actually reported what Garba Shiu said out of context. But having said that, how do we ensure that people are safe and secured in their environment? I know you know so much about that area. Tell us what the place looked like and how this thing could have been averted. Well, um, I, I can divide your question into two. First, the first part, why were the, the farmers attacked? Now, everybody who knows Borno and has any, you know, semblance of an understanding of the security arrangement 
we know that once you are inside the city, then there is uh, reasonable security. Uh, I say I use the word reasonable because even there, there you still see attacks once in a while, but at least the risk is low. The moment you step outside the city, city center, even if it's five kilometers outside the city center, then that risk in, increases. And likewise, as you go further, the risk increases. So it is clear that going into the farms, because these farms are about 15, 20 kilometers out, outside the city center, the risk is much more higher. And that means the security arrangement or the protection of those farms should have been different. And we know that the governor, when he assumed power, he attempted to introduce uh, what he calls paratroopers. He recruited some local residents and then took them to the civil defense and the military for training and armed them with equipment, with equipment and um, automobiles, some of them motorbikes, some of them cars, and, and some basic you know, weaponry to protect the farming communities. But I think what happened in this particular instance is that there has been a stretch where there was no attack in that location. And so the villagers sort of took it for granted that the bad guys were no longer in the location. Unfortunately for them, the bad guys were locking around. And so when they went into the farm, they carried out the attack. So clearly, what is missing is communication and then the effectiveness of the concentric cycle of security. Every security arrangement should have concentric cycles where uh, if you breach the first cycle, then the second cycle would be able to, you know, uh, un uncover it. And then, of course, the final cycle would, would uncover. In this instance, the military told us that they were doing aerial surveillance for farmland. Now, why was there no communication between the villagers and the military or the other civil security departments in, in the location, even the, both the federal and state level? Unfortunately, whatever it was, it was not present. So I believe that an investigation should be conducted and whoever is responsible for allowing or dropping the ball to allow the kind of death that we saw happen should be held accountable. If it's the military, they should be held accountable. If it's the state level initiatives that were introduced, then they should be held accountable. Okay. Um, but bottom line is that no death like this should be left uh, you know, un un unpunished. Okay, good. I think that's a very critical point we'll be looking at. We'll take a short break and bring in Dr. Honor into this discussion. Please don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We understand that the network is pretty bad for us to bring in Dr. Honor into the discussion. So I'm, I'm going to stick with... Uh, Doctor, I mean, Mr. Kabir is also a doctor. So, uh, once again, you're welcome. So let, let let's look at it this way. Uh, and the, uh, the worry now is the last statement you made. This should not go unpunished because the 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 the, the, the way lives are being wasted in this part of the world is a source of concern for many people. And people are saying that. What is the guarantee that government still stands to protect lives and property and they still stand by what the constitution says that our welfare is their utmost concern? Um, sorry, I, I, didn't, I didn't get your question. No, I'm looking at the last statement you made before we went on break on this kind of carnage shouldn't go without some serious um, punitive measures that should be put in place. But how real can this be? And how do we learn our lessons to ensure that the issue of protection of lives is a serious business? Um, frankly, it, it's a matter of, I would say, accountability. Um, the, the, the president has sent a high-level delegation in the person of the president Senate president. Of the who is from that region. In addition, um, some of his aides, including Garbashi, who was part of that delegation, and several other parliamentarians from the Northeast were part of that delegation. And um, it's interesting to note that the issue has generated 
almost uh, massive international attention. And I'm also aware, I don't know if it's true, but at least it's in the open media, that the military has, has redeployed the commander that is in charge of that. Now, beyond that, an investigation needs to be conducted. What happened? How were those farmers allowed to venture into these vulnerable areas without protection? And who was supposed to provide the protection? Now, if someone was supposed to, because there is a big if there, um, it's possible that as part of it, the current assessment, there was a determination that that location was not vulnerable. So maybe there was no arrangement. But if there was an arrangement and whoever was meant to provide that arrangement didn't, then that person should be held accountable. Only an investigation would reveal that. So bottom line, I believe an investigation should be conducted. And that investigation can be either by the military, which is internal, the Operation Latia Theater Commander, or if they don't, then the state government should conduct that investigation. If none of these two conduct the investigation, then the National Assembly should also conduct an investigation um, and determine what happened, who didn't do what he or he was supposed to do or she was supposed to do. And then they, as part of their recommendation, they should now recommend some form of uh, accountability or punitive measure. Mr. Kabiru, I think it's safe to say now, because we are actually not sure of making this assertion, that Borono State, as we speak, cannot be said to be safe. Looking at the quantum of issues that are happening, the other time the president, I mean, the governor was almost killed, and uh, we are talking about such number of people killed in one in, in one fell swoop. So now that it is clear that Borono State is not safe as being portrayed, is it not? I time we looked into the issue of the security chiefs being changed. Okay, uh, my opinion on this is that it is not uh, principally an issue of the security chiefs. Um, the bottom line is that it is at the discretion of Mr. President to change or to leave the security chiefs. That it is purely the discretion. Um, however, their success or failure is traced to him. So where they succeed, he takes um, the commendation. Where they fail, then he takes responsibility for that, that failure. Now, while I say I am not too bothered about whether he leaves them or not leaves them, I he counted the number of organizations within the security sector. There are 27 of them. And the military is only, even if you include the Ministry of Defense and the DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, we are talking of only five military units. So even if you appoint superheroes to head this fight, if the other 22 are not effective, then we would still be in the situation we are. So my own uh, recommendation is not necessarily to change the, head, the leadership of uh, job uh, three or four or five of these units, but to look at the entire security sector and ask the question, how come we are not seeing effectiveness? I mean, there is no organization within the security sector that you pick and you find one issue or the other affecting them. And there, is, there, there are two principal reasons, or three. One of them is the absence of monitoring and evaluation measures within the operations of this organization. How can you and I, as Nigerians, look at them and see metrics that will tell us they are doing well or not? So the introduction of met metrics is absolutely important so that we know of their performances. Have they been able to reduce terrorism? Have they been able to reduce kidnapping? Which organization is responsible for that? And if the leadership of that organization is not doing well, then that, that organization should not be changed. The second point is coordination. No matter how good these 27 are, if they are working in silos or in some instances of where you see an unhealthy rivalry or in certain instances where they actually circumvent the, the success of the, okay. each other, then we are not going to move forward. So coordination 
must be improved upon. These 27 organizations need to work at one with the sole objective of meeting the national interest. Okay. And then lastly, we also need, need to look at the, the issue of um, the appointment of their leadership, whether, whether it's political or, or not, where there is a semblance of politic, political appointment, in which case the loyalty is not to the national interest but to the leader, to leadership of the country, uh, the president as the case may be, or whoever it was that appointed okay. them, then we need to change that to make sure that they are loyal to our country, not necessarily to, to, to the individual. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kabir Adamu, a security expert, and uh, thank you for joining us in this discussion. Thank you very much for having Yes, we'll take a short break, and when we return, a battle of words ensues as rumors saying there will be mass defection to the APC, each Nigerian political scene. In this case, PDP. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.